Over the years, Paradox Interactive has released a lot of amazing games, with one of them, Imperator Rome, having stopped its development more than a year ago, actually I think it's more than two years ago now, which is honestly a shame because the 2.0 version of Imperator Rome was actually absolutely amazing, it revamped the game and it has a massive contrast to the release version of Imperator Rome, which was absolutely, uh, how do I put this into professional terms, uh, dog shit. That being said, since the stop of development on Imperator Rome, the game has slowly been dying off with an average of about five to six hundred players, which is really not that much. It's basically the same like Vicky 2 has and other older games that have also been abandoned for quite some time now. So today I want to show you guys a few things. First off, I want to show you why Imperator Rome deserves another chance. I'm using today a couple of mods. I'm uh, using Invictus and I'm also using a uh, better UI mod. Link to both of those in the description below. The Invictus mod, for example, is a team of uh, really dedicated modders that have been trying to keep the game alive. They've even been having multiple patches, with one of the more recent ones having significant changes to the game. I'm doing this video today also at the same time as some other E4 creators have been doing videos for Imperator Rome. It's our little attempt to uh, increase the amount of players that Imperator Rome has been getting, and I hope that you guys do decide to give the game a chance because it is worth it. Now I want to show you guys a little bit of a graph first from uh, Steam charts here. When <laughs> the game was first released, uh, it had an average of roughly 20,000 players, I would say. That was in May 2019. That's the earliest we have uh, the information for this. It was 13. That was a reduction of something. I don't know. Let's let's call it 20,000, right? Now there were a few other patches along the way and during these patches we went up to 6,000, 6,000 and 7,000 players when the 2.0 patch came out which honestly is deserved since the 2.0 patch is actually amazing. I would personally like to see some of the features in Imperator Rome get implemented into EU5 and we're going to discuss those features and I'm going to illustrate those features as we go along in today's video. Then you can see here slowly it started dying off from average of a thousand to eight, nine, seven hundred and still drifted around the same numbers here. But then check this out. February 2024, 1,200 players. If we uh, zoom in a little bit better here you can see it even more all of a sudden it went from 6 500 average to 1200 that is because a bunch of e4 creators decided to make content on this uh, amazing game and it did boost the numbers look at that for a few days even it stayed at a thousand then it started going back to 800 800 700 and now back to 900 so this is a week after that I'm making my video here and that is because I want to show the after effects of uh, what we're trying to do here I think that it's worth it and that it has had an impact on the game now the real question is did it have enough of an impact for Paradox to actually relaunch development on Imperator Rome that's a little bit debatable and I probably will get some hate for saying this but and I hope I'm wrong by the way but I don't think it's enough I would say that there has to be an average of 5,000 concurrent players for this game for Paradox to actually pick it up a game but then again they made Victoria 3 the Despite Victoria 2 having had how many average players? Let's check. Actually, uh, I take my words back. Victoria 2 surprisingly still has a th what? Victoria 2's got more players than Imperator Rome. Still. And in 2020 and in 2021, it had even more. Three sa- what? No shot. No actual freaking shot. How the hell is this game getting so many players, man? <laughs> what? Okay, that is interesting. We see a sudden drop over here, though, in uh, Victoria 2. I'm guessing that is coincidental incidentally with uh, Victoria 3 coming out and um, you know taking a big chunk of the Victoria 2 players I assume but yeah my point in case right despite not having an average of 5,000 players as I was saying they still made Victoria 3 so maybe we're gonna see an Imperator Rome 2 which is better fleshed out before they actually release it because I think one of the main reasons why Imperator Rome has done so bad is because the initial version of the game when it was released was complete dog shit I mean I I'm not gonna sugarcoat it it was really freaking bad all right so let's get back into the game itself now, we are using the 1.7 Vesuvius version of uh, the Invictus mod. You can see here a quick summary of what has been added. It's It's gotten a lot of things added, so let's boot up the map itself first. I also want to mention that my last video for Imperator Rome, I actually used the Invictus mod without realizing, because when I started recording the video, I, uh, I didn't play the game for like a few months, and I didn't know that I had the mod installed, right? And then I was like, oh my god, this game is amazing after 2.0 patch. 
I was actually convinced that that was the 2.0 patch, but it was actually the Invictus mod. And look at that. From the get-go, we have this new interface at the bottom here. This is 100% done by the mod. That is actually insane. The countries with missions recommended, and you see the difficulty as well and everything, that is just actually freaking insane. We have a slider. Dude, they've done, honestly, a much better job than the actual developers have done. Now, let's, of course, go for Iron Man mode, because I don't want to have to save every five seconds, and let's start uh, as the Romans. Before we do, we have the game rules here, and as you can see here, we have uh, some uh, historical events that will trigger. Again, this is all done by the mod, which is mind-blowing to me. It's quite literally on par with the quality of the actual developers having done this. We have the Galatian invasion. Invictus adds the historical Celtic invasion of Anatolia to simulate the historical migration of Galatian tribes. Dynastic Diadochi names. Chaotic major powers. Chaotic AI and so on. Large revolts, etc, etc. So, that means that if you have these enacted, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a more slightly historical playthrough, let's say, since it's gonna bring a lot of events to try and follow along with what historically did happen speaking of the galatians they didn't have a very long period of uh hanging out in anatolia they did eventually did get assimilated by the various anatolians and other invading people but yes uh my city where i'm from actually is also called galat it's likely that it did get its name from the galatians that migrated via the uh, former dacian bits into anatolia eventually around this particular time period that being said it's it's not confirmed it's just a similarity because the first First attested um, evidence of my city is from thousands of years later. So I guess that's just really a food for thought more than anything else. And look at that. My last out auto save was in 2020. Holy shit. I haven't played this game for two freaking years. That is actually mind blowing to me. All right. So let's start this off for the Republic. Let's check what's going on here. The interface really has seen a lot of changes with the mod that I'm using. That is for sure. If I was to really explain what Imperator Rome is, I would say that it's a mix of E4 with CK3 and and a sprinkle of Victoria on top because it has a little bit of everything. It essentially has the EU4 combat system, albeit a little bit more different because it does have levies and some things that are akin to CK3 and CK2. But at the same time, it also has characters and the way you interact with these characters has a massive influence on your country because essentially, if you don't keep your characters in check, you might get uh, a few revolts and we don't want to have any revolts now, do we? Well, at the same time, having loyal characters can present with benefits also i just realized that the character screen has also been changed oh my god there's a lot more information now so say for example let's check the first guy here neos flavius tribunus plebis so that's his rank in our society tribunus plebis is one of the offices so if we go to government tab we see our offices and we have a few different ones here we can change them of course if we want to very important to have characters with high loyalty in office and of course higher level of specific uh, traits is desired like this guy has got nine charisma that would actually be pretty freaking good would be actually better to replace this guy with the nine charisma dude but he's 60 years old and if we change this guy he will be disloyal i don't know we'll we'll, we'll have to think about this first oh wait hold on a sec so actually this guy's got 10 charisma oh this this is new i think this is new so they slowly build up towards the maximum is that something that's from the mod i guess that is right because i don't remember this before being a thing so yeah have the current level of effectiveness and then eventually they will reach towards a top that they have uh, based on their skill level okay interesting we also have our legislation here which uh, affect our country significantly like for example getting the punic reforms and the marian reforms allows us to basically have professional legions whilst right now we just have the levies which is citizens armed in case of war essentially to make it really 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 easy to understand our economy tab fairly easy as well if if we increase our taxes then we lose research points or export value if we um, decide to uh, increase our taxes for commerce oh we have some actual new interactions here wow the 23 months research points minus 50 but we get 27 ducats okay this is really cool this has to be from the mod because this was not in before holy mother man the modders of this invictus team is insane like they actually made a huge amount of this is like a completely new game dude like actually a completely new new game now i want to see the culture map mode and everything because this looks very interesting all right so we have right now the latin group here or the italic group 
which is fairly accurate. The Sardinians, Corsicans, a separate group. We have the Punics as well, the North Africans, the two different types of Iberian parts, the Celts all around everywhere. Kind of funny how the Celts eventually went from having most of Europe under their control to having just being restricted to, well, their descendants are being restricted to parts of uh, Bretonia and uh, Ireland, Scotland, right? And Wales. Yeah, I like the culture map mode. I have to say that this is extremely well done. That being said, though, the Thracians, I would probably put in the same culture group with the Dacians because we have cataloged them in the same culture group, historically speaking. Like, the language and the habits were pretty much the same. The Dacians were actually different from the Thracians from some perspectives, but I guess it's uh, a little bit subjective if the difference was that big that you would make it into a different culture group. So nice to see Aramaic, Assyrians, and Babylonians, and so on here. Kind of insane how uh, just 2,500 years ago, they were still around, and eventually the Arab tribes just managed to completely convert all of these cultures to um, Arabic, right? So let's go back to the diplomat mode. So we have the Seleucid Empire, which is one of the biggest empires right now. These are, of course, the descendants of uh, the uh, Alexander the Great's empire, the Diodaci. We have the Antigonid Kingdom, the Macedonians, or Antipatrid. We also have Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt after Ptolemy. Bactria as well, the long-lost and forgotten Greek Kingdom in Africa, Greek Kingdom in Asia that um, I actually want to make a video on, to be honest with you guys. So I got a historical video coming on the Battle of Varna, but I was really thinking to make another video on Bactria, because Bactria is one of the least known kingdoms, and there's not that many videos on Bactria. I would love to make one, actually. What do you guys think? Should I do one? Let me know in the comment section. Now, of course, for us right now, the Carthaginians are by far the biggest threat, and this threat that we're going to need to deal with here. But before we do so, let's uh, set up our country. So we have our omens. We can call an omen right now. We also have uh, empty altars, so we can assign some stuff there. Let's say population assimilation speed. Why not? And what else? Statue of Siren Park. No, let's go for integrate culture happiness. There you go. That works for me. These are the holy sites right now for our gods, and we might get more as we expand. I think I'm going to go for Jupiter. Yeah, I think Jupiter works because that's going to give me aggressive expansion change minus 0 0.04. Thing is, um, I really want to expand like crazy. I think the best course of action as the Romans is to expand fast and then, you know, wait for the AE to go down as you're expanding. But then again, that's pretty much my tactic in every single game I've ever played. So we also have ideas. Okay, so let's go for some uh, Roman ideas. Now, if we do two military ideas and one oratory idea, we get a bonus from that. So let's go ahead and get the uh, morale of armies in true Roman fashion, army morale recovery. And as our civic idea, we can go for monthly corruption or loyalty of generals. I'm going to go for the corruption. That should be better. Now, the bonus from matching ideas is loyalty of characters and national freeman happiness. That's pretty good. I'd say that's pretty, pretty good. Go ahead to inventions. Inventions is basically how you get new technologies, right? So we have a few categories here. We have the martial advances, civic advances, oratory, and religious advances. And I think this also has been redone by the mod because I'm seeing a lot more than there are in the base game here. Holy mother, that's a ton more. We have eight inventions, so we can assign basically these inventions and just get eight technologies. So let's go for the aggressive expansion one first. We also want to get some military advances, of course, such as the active drill. So in order to get active active drill, we need to get basic training and then active drill, which is going to give 5% discipline. That will make a difference in the early campaign, of course. And we can go another five discipline. This is also going to allow us to raise a legion in the capital region. So we want those legions, obviously, because, um, you know, legions are the backbone of our economy and our society. We can also get some import value and an extra capital import route. So we get more money and maybe property tax. No, let's go for the um, religious advances. Let's get the first one. So at least we have one religious advance. That's it. No more innovation left. So now we just need to wait for our technology to increase and to get uh, more innovation as we progress. I'd say that the characters assigned for each of these technologies right now are fairly decent. So I'm going to keep them as they are. Let's also start our mission. I have to say that the interface is way better than it was in the base game, but at the same time, it's not as intuitive as it is in other Paradox games. I would say the interface in EO4 is probably the best interface in all Paradox games. I love to see that, uh, you know, replicated in the nearby future, let's say. Go ahead and uh, click Encourage Expansion. This is going to start giving us claims on our neighbors because we will be attacking all of our neighbors. We also start with a few subjects, so we're going to be improving relations with these subjects. We're going to go improve opinion, boom, shakalaka.
Malakas, all of them so that we can uh, integrate them afterwards. You got a lack of commanders, you say, okay? Well, let's assign this guy. He's got a little bit of popularity, but he's 60 years old, so um, he might not be around for too much longer, that's for sure. Let's also use up our capital trade routes for importing stuff. Now, when you import trade goods, aside from the money that you obviously get from having these imports done, you also get some bonuses. When you have a surplus, that means more than one of that particular trade good in your capital, you get a surplus alongside the bonus did I just say surplus twice? I meant you get a bonus and then you get a surplus right after. That's what I actually meant. So let's see, for example, we already have 10 grain potentials to choose from, but we already have the grain and the surplus in our capital. So it wouldn't be very beneficial to get this, in my opinion. We can try and import something else in exchange. Like say uh, we can uh, get some precious metals first from Dacia. Yeah, why not? Let's go for Dacia. That works for me. We can get the surplus as well afterwards. So we get the national citizen happiness plus 8% make everybody super happy with us and also get uh, elephants from the Carthaginians I'm not sure how long that's gonna stay for because uh, they might cancel once we go to war in the nearby future also gonna try and get some dates but it looks like I don't have anyone that I could potentially get dates from these guys would not like to trade with me unfortunately how about honey the diplo reputation could help out a little bit I guess oh population promotion speed I like that let's go for this as well for the livestock and we also got the uh, the spear offense from uh, getting the extra wood strategic resource as well now we have some other modifiers here are stability or aggressive expansion war exhaustion tyranny or tyranny and support in the Senate most importantly is our political influence this is what we use essentially for most interactions we used to have mana points now there's no more mana points now there's political influence which is basically instead of having three separate types of mana points we have one mana point political influence now all right, we got a claim on the Etruscan territories. Hell yeah, buddy. Also, for more military, we have a few different traditions here. So we're obviously going to go for the Roman traditions, which allow us siege ability, a lot of heavy infantry offense, discipline, and so on. And most importantly, we get the ability to build military roads. Honestly, the best part about this game is the fact that you can build the roads for the first time in history, you know? We're, we're paving the future, quite literally, for our civilization. Now, that being said, let's raise levies because we're going to need to go to war with the Etruscan scumbags and uh, wipe them out, shall we? We do have a bad research ratio. That is because we don't have enough of the right population. Okay, so let's click on Rome. We have a few different types of populations. We have nobles, citizens, freemen, tribesmen, and slaves. Each population offers different things, like the nobles offer research points, citizens research points, and manpower. The freemen, again, manpower and tax, and basically tribesmen tax and manpower as well, but very limited and and slaves only base tax we can also build granaries we can build a lot of different buildings that will increase our input of uh, civilization level of taxation of assimilating people if we build the grand theaters for example or even research points if we have libraries so we're gonna build a library because uh, our research is quite lacking right now we don't have much of an economy so we're gonna need to be careful with uh, what we're doing here but we're also gonna need to um, go to war so uh, let's get ready let's get by the border with these guys we're gonna to declare on the 1st of November 450. This is in case you're wondering uh, the date that the Romans had, which is Ab Urbe Condita, which means from the founding of the city. You can see over there if you hover over it. In our timeline, the Gregorian calendar, it is 304 before current era. So this is roughly, what, 30 years, give or take? Take note, some aspects of the game are very, very RNG and they will be different as you uh, start a brand new save. So that's why I restarted just to show you guys here my government has different loyalty values and different uh, effectiveness values for the generals compared to what it had before that is because it is a brand new game and i feel like this is for sure a staple of paradox games that really just makes them a lot more replayable because every time you start a brand new game it's not really the same game even though it's the same nation right and yes i did restart because i had dog shit rng and i um i had a massive coalition in the north which i didn't really want to fight against okay are you happy now it is what it is. Oh, but Ludi, why you don't waste 29 million years to give a, get the moment to attack coalition, bro? Why you not do that, bro? Brother, brother, you played the game however you want to play it. Let me play how I want to play it, okay? Please. <laughs> Almost forgot to improve relations with these guys again. What was the bonus for getting a surplus of salt? Let's check. That would be legion maintenance cost minus 5%. Well, we don't have any legions now, but that's good to know for the future, I guess. I feel like for me, the best part about um, Imperator Rome is that 
that the amount of stuff you can do for your country to just develop it and just essentially play toll is a lot obviously if you don't want to you can just expand like crazy which is what we're gonna do but once you've done your expansion you really can just chill and with say the Italian Peninsula under your control you can make that such high development in a sense right and get a lot of population in there is what I'm talking about get all the buildings in there and just in essence make it super easy to conquer everybody else after you've got your power base done right all right so let's see they have an alliance with Etruria, Umbria and Picentia exactly the same alliance that I didn't want to fight in the previous uh, reload <laughs> fuck my life all right I mean I guess it is what it is we're gonna have to deal with it then I would prefer to attack these guys in that case but uh, because of that I need to wait until the truce is over with them maybe I'll just get an, a, a claim on these guys so I don't have to yes that would be way better this way I don't need to fight uh, Etruria so I'm okay with fighting Umbria and uh, fighting Sabinia and Picentia in the same alliance set but I'm not okay with Etruria being in that because Etruria is actually pretty strong oh there you go just as I said it we got Umbria so um, let's go ahead and attack the um did I just get two iron three iron I did okay let's cancel one of those so we can attack them for Picenum, Arini, Ariminum and Tuscia which one is the high I think Ariminum has the most territories four three four. okay Picenum actually has the four Picenia, Sabinia and Umbria easy war in my opinion absolutely easy war let's go ahead and uh, raise our legions there you go raise levies raise levies we don't have any legions sadly for now we need to change our legislation for that so we would have to go to government laws and we would have to have either the Punic reforms which is going to allow us to raise legion in the capital region or the military or the Marian reforms but we need to be a regional power in order to get that done so we're going to become a regional power after we've conquered uh, Picenum, Sabinia and um, Umbria right we're also going to build a granary in Rome because we do need more food the old e4 bait and switch still works in this game we wait until they got movement locked and then they have to fight against us and we wipe them out essentially right oh yeah baby give me some of them trooplers i also like how uh you genuinely can assign your units any way you want so for example here you can see what your primary co cohorts want to be what the secondary should be what your flanks could look like so you can obviously put heavy infantry on the flanks if that's what you want obviously keep it as cavalry right then then uh, you can put uh, archers in the second cohorts if you have archers and so on. Supply trains are basically mules that carry around your food for your armies. If you don't have mules to carry the food, then you're not going to have food for the armies. And you're going to have issues with that, obviously. And the best part, in my opinion, about this game is that whenever you ransack provinces, you actually get a small percentage of, this, of that population as your slaves that you can eventually use for yourself in your own lands. And obviously, with time as they progress, they will be promoted to different ranks eventually freemen citizens even noblemen now if we go to the atlas map mode which i really like you can see the roads that we have right now so we have only one road in the entirety of the planet okay oh no actually never mind what these i never knew that holy shit these guys start with roads all around anatole no shot no actual shot i thought that we start with the only roads man i was so wrong oh my god is this the silk road this has to be some type of silk road isn't it so this the Seleucids start with the highest amount of road networks around uh, alongside the Antigonids. Oh my god, I'm so jelly right now. I'm actually so jelly. Anybody else have roads? No. Just the just the Antigonids, Seleucids, and us a little bit. You can also select different tactics for your armies, which will be more or less effective depending on what your army composition is. So we have the envelopment, skirmishing, deception, bottleneck, shock action, and we have the triple axes, which we can unlock afterwards. It's not unlocked from the beginning. We do that after after we have from the Roman traditions uh, the uh, triple axes uh, unlocked over here I believe yes that is correct ha nice one Umbria I am not gonna give you any peace deal bro I need to fully occupy all of your allies so I can annex all three of you in this war okay we're not doing any peace deal here sir not yet anyway we're not no we've been defeated oh the pain the pain of having lost the battle our first loss of the campaign oh and of course in classic looty fashion we go up to 42 percent with this freaking siege why not go up to a thousand percent really guys i mean come on bro oh we got sacking of intermania all right let the men roam free
freely gives us 42 ducats and two civilian citizens are going to be killed or just 28 or 70 and we get cruel for this guy Ooh, let the looting be gentle actually i'm, I'm fine with gentle looting boys i'm a gentle loot myself mon all right so we can peace out sabinia now because they're not the war target and we fully occupied them so let's go ahead and uh, just completely wipe them out now we've become a regional power that is awesome we're gonna um, banish them i mean their characters we're gonna banish and we're also gonna try and crush what's left of the umbrian troops before we uh, peace them out and take their capital i also like that uh, whenever you capture the capital of an entire region all the other provinces also become um occupied see like this look at that automatically the provinces get occupied by us now okay so because we are a regional power we can do the punic reforms let's go ahead and pass that up we could also get the punic reforms from an event but i'm not gonna bother waiting for that doing it now so i can actually start raising my first legion we can have one per capital region if i'm not mistaken so let's see legions we can raise one in italia magna grecia we can only have one so we cannot raise any in magna grecia that sucks okay no problem all right let's see what is our legion gonna look like boys we don't really have the money for a legion yet okay we can wait no problem we can wait let's go ahead and peace out these bad boys too noise avec le more lands for us and we can lose a little bit of aggressive expansion in the process too juicy juicy very juicy smoulier all right and you guys fully as annexation also amaze balls oh my lord we are literally double in size now look at that look at our name on the map that's what it's about boys the name on the map and now we have a few missions we can do we can unseat the umbrians now we have a few options here we can get population assimilation and freemen in a few provinces so what are we going to choose here uh four people become roman three four four five become roman let's go for this one because that way we get five roman population which is way better than three right okay let's also see if we can get some claims on ancona if they accept they will become our tributary if they don't accept then we're going to be um, wiping them off the face of the map ancona i'm looking at you right now you better be mine ancona being one one of the uh, Greek colonies over here. Okay, they decided not to be my friend. Okay, cool. No problem. No problem. I see you, brother. I see you. Let's go attack him. Tachius Maximus. So you attack Ancona and the other army is going to attack their allies, the Senones. Barbarian scumbags, of course. Wait, we got 7.64 aggressive expansion from just taking a couple of provinces? That doesn't really seem fair to me. What? Okay, let's see when our truce is finishing with the Etrurians. 458 is when the truce expires. How about with the Sabines? that with samnium i mean 456 so we're going to be attacking into the south first and then back up into etruria i guess in that case we will need to have legions before we attack etruria because they are pretty strong and legions are even stronger so obviously that's why you know playing this really uh brings back memories of a while back when i used to really play imperato rome a lot around the time that the 2.0 patch came out i freaking think i had like what one month in which i played it a ton and then i just stopped because you know i have to play e4 and other games Games that I actually make a living out of and nobody watches Imperator Rome videos. But it's kind of a shame, you know, that this game was basically doomed to um, fail because of a really bad launch. Goes to show, maybe it deserves a second chance since, you know, it's it's gotten a lot more fleshed out since the beginning of um, its inception. Because what I'm trying to say is you better play the freaking game, you scumbags. You better get it, get the game, play it right now. I know most of you have it and you just haven't played it. It's just stick sitting there in your freaking library and doing nothing for all this time okay don't let it go to waste okay you paid good money you better play it now sir okay let's also build up some stuff in um in the cop while we're gonna get a library over there so we increase our research output a little bit if we can i'm gonna try and get a library in all of my bigger cities obviously and these guys have been fully sieged down so let's go ahead and get that for aggressive expansion apparently wow that's a lot of aggressive expansion for just a few barbarian scummy lands isn't it looks like we can do drive out the goals now so we can get three population in Sena Gallica because Becomes Roman or four or five Gallic pops and owned Gallic dominant territories have fled. Okay, no, no, no. We don't care about them fleeing. We want them to become Romans. We don't want them to go away. We want them to Romanize. That's the goal here. So now with the northern bits pacified, in essence, we can uh, start marching into the south up next in one year. So we're going to disband our units for now because we're going to have one year of peace, I guess. Position our troops in Neapolis just so we're ready for the attack on uh, Samnium whenever the truce is done. I also really like the fact that uh, building stuff in your cities is completely different from building them in your smaller settlements or villages as I like to call them and then cities also have ranks right so eventually we'll be able to turn our cities into metropolises which are basically bigger cities there you go so in order to found a metropolis
analysis here, we need to have population equal or greater to 80, 400 uh, ducats and 100 influence. Okay, that's actually really expensive to turn this into a metropolis. Holy snaps. We could also turn the settlements into cities, but if we do turn them into cities, then we don't have anybody to produce the low level resources. We need the small settlements so we get the food for the cities. So yeah, you cannot just have every single one of your provinces as a city, obviously. Someone's got to do the dirty work, boys. Wait, what? They've got no allies? Oh my god, this is going to be the easiest war imaginable. e fracking imaginable, boys. I actually just remembered I had an entire Let's Play done for Imperator Rome when it first came out. This is when I was like a 10,000 subs channel or something of the sort. And I've since long deleted those videos. But yeah, actually, they're not deleted. They're unlisted for that matter. Kind of brings back a lot of old memories. And it's just sad to see this game having gone into obscurity. It's kind of like uh, March of the Eagles. You know, it's basically become a little bit of a meme slash copium sort of thing for the community, I'd say. All right, looks like another one's bite the dust here. Boom shakalokodons. And now we have claims on the entirety of uh, Lucania and uh, Brutia for that matter too. Let's go ahead and also uh, do the next mission here. So what do we have? We've got crush the Samnites. We can get six population and Bovianum become Roman. Clearly that is the way. Now I'm also thinking to do a live stream with Imperator Rome. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comment section also. And hey, if you enjoy the video and you want to play the game, go ahead and give it a try. You're not going to regret it. Maybe it's even going to make Paradox actually restart development on Imperator Rome. That is our goal after all, right? To boost up the numbers so they realize that it's worth making more patches for Imperator Rome. Maybe a DLC for Imperator Rome. Who's to say? Love you all. And until the next time, check out this amazing EO4 video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.